Welcome back to XOR Engineer Training. This is part 13, Extending Context and Quiet Mode. In this video, we'll review how to use Extend Context, which is a useful feature that allows us to control what goes into context and where. We'll also review the use of Quiet Mode for both playbooks and playbook tasks and where we might use it. And with that, let's get to it. Where data returned by an integration automation or a command is not exactly what you need, or the command may return more information than is actually required to drive the playbook. In these situations, we can use the extend context feature to further control what and where we add things into context. To start, let's look at the simple playbook that executes the ad get user command from the Active Directory query integration. We can set the extend context options for this task by clicking on the task and going to the advanced tab. Hovering over the question mark for extend context, context explains what this feature does. Basically, it allows us to append the extracted results of the action to our own context key within context. In this case, we've already pre-filled this out where we, we will add the user's display name to the user display name key within context. If we hit okay and run this via our debugger panel, we can see what happens. As you can see, the user's display name was added to our own context key, as well as the other outputs that were defined by the AD get user task. But how do we know where to get that information from this task in order to place it in our own key? Well, for that, we're gonna explain how to use the raw response option when executing commands or automations to allow you to see what you can extend into context. In order to use extend context, we need to see the raw response of the command or automation that we are running to determine where we can get the data to put into our custom context keys. To demonstrate, we can run the ad get user command from within the XOR playground. Type ad get user, we'll give it the email for james.bond at xor.local, and we'll add the raw response equals true argument to return the raw response for this particular command the full JSON response that is returned by this particular command. If we click View JSON in New Tab, we can see where we get the display name of the user from the raw response. We can see we have an attributes key, which contains the display name with one item, which is item zero, which contains the name for James Bond. Returning to our playground, we can run the command again, adding in the extend context argument ad get user email is james.bond at xor.local and then we can add the extend context item and add in our our parameters again telling it to place the user display name context key and grab the display name from the attributes dot display name and grab item zero again looking at our raw response attributes display name item zero. Running the command, we can double check that the item got placed into context from our playground as well. So seeing the same behavior that we saw from within our playbook. We'd like to talk about ignoring outputs as part of extending context. If we take a look at our task, again, we have added the extend context option to add that display name to our own context key. Right below it is the option to ignore the outputs. In this case, by checking the flag or using the argument from the XOR CLI means that it will drop the remaining outputs from this task and only add the key that we told it to into context. We can give this a run. We can see that only our user display name in this case was added to context. Taking a look at the outputs for this particular task, everything else was ignored. And this way we can use extend context to only put the information that we actually need in our playbook into context for use by following tasks. If we're doing that and we don't require all the other options, we can use the ignore outputs to drop everything else. Extending context along with ignore outputs allows us to control the data that we are bringing into context as well as dropping data that is not required to make our playbooks work. This in turn can make our playbooks extremely efficient. For example, as part of our series, 
we brought in several hundred sample events that we never took action upon. Searching in our instance screen, we can see that we have 200 instances that are currently in a state of pending. These were brought in before we built the playbook to, that takes action on these alerts. Well, let's clean this up. Let's build a playbook that uses extend context to both find and close all these incidents in an efficient manner. Started our sample playbook, which uses the search incidents v2 automation with the same query to find all of those incidents. In this case, all incidents which are not closed, they are not a job, and they are currently in the status of pending. Once we find all the incidents, we can use the close investigation built-in command. This takes the ID of the incident that we want to close. And we know from our previous video on looping that if we pass an array of incident IDs into this task, it will loop over and close each one for us. See what search incidents v2 returns. We can again set a breakpoint on our close investigation task and run this playbook via our playbook debugger. See the outputs, in this case, the found instance key, which contains an item for each incident that it found, which displays the entire incident object for each one of those incidents. If we scroll down on these, we can take a look at and see if we have the ID, which in this case is right here, and we can even use some DT syntax to find the IDs within context. In this case, putting a dollar sign curly brace and giving us found instance.id to return the array of items that we would then pass into our close investigation. However, you can see that we only have 51 due to its size. The number of items returned has been truncated in context within our viewer. Don't worry, they're still there. But again, as we look at this item, we can see that all we really need is the IDs and we're getting back a lot more information than that. So let's use extend context as well as ignore outputs to only return the IDs for the incidents and make this a lot more efficient. Once again, we can use our playbook to test this out. Running the search instance v2 automation from within the XOR CLI, passing in our query, in this case, we'll only ask it to return one, one incident as we just need to check from the raw response where that ID is so we can use it within extend context. Hit enter and let this run. And we can click view JSON in, full, in a full tab. Reviewing the raw response from our incident that we found, we can do a search in here to help find the ID for that this particular incident a lot easier. In this case, you can see the ID number is right here and that is tucked under the contents data key, which means that if we were to pass in contents.data.id, we should be able to return the array of just IDs using extend context. So let's give it a try. Okay, let's modify the search instance v2 task, adding in our extend context items. In this case, we'll place all the incident IDs under the found incident IDs context key. We'll hit OK, and we'll run our playbook via the debugger to see how this looks. As you can see, we now have another key with just the incident IDs for the found instance under context. This looks pretty good, so we can stop, go back to advanced, and tell it to ignore outputs. This will drop all the extra data from all the found instance, which will make our playbook really efficient. Give this one more run via our debugger, we can see now that we just have the incident IDs within context, which we could then pass into our close investigation task. Validate our information from context, in this case, dollar sign curly brace, found incident IDs. And if we hit enter, we can see that we have the array of items that we would pass into our close investigation task. If we stop our debugger, we go to close investigation and add this into the ID argument. This means that when it hits this task, it should loop over each item in the array and close those incidents for us. Playbook, let's add one more enhancement to it, which is setting our playbook to run in quiet mode. Now quiet mode configures a playbook or a playbook task to just log errors and warnings as results and prevents adding the additional results as entries into the incident war room. This feature can make our playbooks extremely efficient and can also help us deal with large data sizes. Quiet mode also by default disables auto extract and enrichment, and it can be set in two places. 
First, we can set the entire playbook to run into quiet mode by clicking the cog, expanding advanced, and enabling the quiet mode feature here. This sets the entire playbook and all tasks within it to quiet mode. In addition, on individual tasks, such as our closed investigation, go to the advanced tab at the bottom and toggle quiet mode on or off for individual tasks. By default, it will inherit from the parent, but you can turn it on and off to override it at this level. What it does, let's again run from our debugger and take a look at the results from the search incidents v2 task. If we pop this open, you can see that it has indeed written one result, which has a table that contains all of our instance, their name, their severity, status, etc., to a very large table. This in itself is an extremely large object that we don't actually need for our playbook to be successful. In addition, we've logged the inputs as well as the outputs from our extend context. Now, we already made this playbook very efficient in context by using extend context as well as ignore outputs. So let's tune this playbook to quiet mode and see the difference. Close out of here, we'll hit stop, and we'll go to our playbook settings and set it to run in quiet mode. If we again run from our debugger panel, we can take a look at the difference between the results. In this case, the result was not recorded and written to our war room. In addition, the inputs and outputs were not recorded either. This makes this task run extremely efficiently, as it also makes sure to disable auto extract, even if we had set it to inline. And if we take a look at our context, we still have the context within uh, context to allow us to close our incidents on the following task. We can remove our breakpoint. We can even run this from within the playbook debugger, and we should close all 200 incidents in a very efficient manner. We'll give this a run. Let it complete. As you can see, we have the search incidents and the close incident task completed successfully. If we go to our incident search screen, hopefully we see everything in pending has already been closed. Reviewing our incident search screen, rerunning our search, see that we still have 100 incident open, incidents open. This is interesting, but we think we know why. Go back to our playbook and look at our search incidents v2. This takes a size argument, which we saw when we used the playground task to return just the raw response. In this case, the size defaults to 100, so we only closed half of our open incidents. Let's override this to 200, hit OK, and give this a run one more time. If we did our job again, the remaining tasks should be closed. And with that, a very quick and simple playbook that's actually extremely efficient by using extend context as well as quiet mode. For our last example, let's look at using extend context to add items into context for a command that doesn't have any defined outputs. For example, in our current playbook, we have a task that uses the find indicators built in command. In this case, we're asking it to find all indicators where the type is URL and the tag is approved block. In this case, finding all the URLs that we blocked as part of building out our use case. If we look at the outputs for this task, there are no outputs defined for this particular automation. If we run the task from within our playbook debugger, you can see that no items are placed into context. Yet looking at the task results, we do indeed find URLs that have the, the approved block ta tag. So in this case, how can we tell if there's any raw response that we can use to extend these URLs into context so we can use them within our playbook? Well, for that, we'll pivot back to our playground. We're back in our playground. This time we're gonna run the find indicators command with the same query, adding our raw response equals true. What we're checking to see is does this command actually return raw details for what we can use to extend into context? See, we do get an entry back and viewing this one within our playground, we can see that there is indeed raw JSON that is returned by this particular command, meaning that it is indeed eligible for extending context. Within our playbook, let's use extend context to pass the entire raw response for all those indicators into our own key. Again, this particular task has no outputs, but we do know it has a raw response. So let's add everything from that raw response into the found indicators key. 
We do this by just simply adding a period, to telling XOR to place everything from that raw response into our key. We give it a run from our playbook debugger. And we can see that now that entire raw response, all 28 items containing everything we know about those indicators has been placed into that context key. Now this returns a lot of data. What if we only wanted the value and type for those particular indicators? Well, for that, we can use a little DT syntax to get select keys from our list of dictionaries. Go back to our task and back to advanced. In this case, instead of returning the entire raw response, we'll add a bit of DT syntax. If you're wondering where we got this, it's straight from our XOR pan dev site on extending context. In this case, we're telling it to just return the value of the indicator to the value key, as well as the indicator type to the indicator type key. Let's hit okay and give this a run and take a look at the difference. In this case, we still have 28 items, but instead of the entire indicator object, we just have the type as well as the value for the URLs that we're currently blocking within our system. Very efficient. And with that, let's review what we did in this video. Remember that extending context can be used to control both what data as well as how much data is returned into context. Considering using it when you only need a subset of the outputs returned from a command, for example, just the incident IDs from a list of incidents. You can also use it for commands which do not return data into context, but do have a raw response. For example, returning the type and value of indicators from the find indicators built-in command. Lastly, remember to test using the raw response equals true flag or argument, and use ignore outputs to drop any data that you do not require. For more information on extending context, take a look at that on both our Cortex XOR admin guide, as well as our XOR developer site. Lastly, you can use quiet mode to increase the efficiency of your playbooks, particularly in cases where large amounts of data are being used or returned. When you use quiet mode, tasks won't display inputs or outputs, nor will they auto extract indicators, and only errors and warnings will be returned to the war room. You can set quiet mode at the playbook level under the playbooks config and the advanced option, and playbook tasks will inherit quiet mode from the playbook but can, you can still turn it on or off for specific tasks from the advanced tab on that task. And with that, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.